the content that it's going to put out after the prompt. Tell it what to include, what to exclude, choose a relevant voice and a writing style. So if we have a second, we'll do it, but you can literally say, make it an iambic pentameter like Shakespeare, or make it rhyme, or make it funny, or make it punchy, or make it edgy. So you tell it what voice you want, and it can create that content for you. Um, examples if you have them, and then sometimes, sometimes this doesn't work very well, but you tell it how long you want the, the information to be. So we're going to do a blog post. I think what I'm going to try to do is, See if this goes. Okay, so I'm going to start. Let's do it with So, if you happen to be using Microsoft Edge, which is based on Chromium, which is the Chrome browser, Edge and Chrome are very, very similar. So, if you're using Chrome, great, go for it. If you want to use Edge, it's going to support all the same things that Chrome does. But we've built in something that internally we call Shoreline. Um, I also have brought up chat.bing.com. I'm going to use Bing, which is all based on ChatGPT. We've basically integrated ChatGPT in a lot of what we're doing. Mark's going to show you how it's integrated in his news writer. But this is the underlying technology for a lot of the text-based AI that you might be using out in the wild and not even realize you're using. So let's call this, we'll make this more creative. We're going to say, sorry, it's I want you to act as a blank, write a blank word blog post on blank, make it a format, however you want the format, what the tone is, who the target audience is, and include information about blank, but don't do this. And we're going to craft this together. Okay, so that's the prompt. And now we're going to do it. So. You're going to do this with me. I want you to act as a, this is probably not necessary, um, but I'm going to call it a copywriter. Again, if I didn't do that, it probably wouldn't have. Um, write a 500 word blog post. Uh, make it include bullet points, what's the tone? Just make it, make it what? It's comical. I find that the humor isn't as funny as you might want it. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, all right, so let's think of, somebody think of their business. Who's your target audience? Commercial building owners. Okay, the audience is what's the topic? We're gonna do that in a second. Um, I didn't have to be in order. Commercial business owners. Is that what you said? Building. Commercial business. Building. Oh, commercial building. Sorry. There we go. I said I grew up in the industry. I still type it three times. Oh, okay. So that's why I'm doing this slide. Uh, the target audience is commercial building owners. And the topic is what? Janitorial. <laughs> Give me a little more detail. Is janitor services? Designers who work in coastal regions, but don't include the price of the surplus. Our boards are 10 to 15 grand, so it's like, okay, let's see what we got. Okay, oh no, I signed out. All right, so here's what we're going to do we're going to move it over. See how I got signed out. Let's see if I can do this. We're going to move it over to just the core. Open AI tech directly in the tech as opposed to the Bing, which is integrated with it. So we're just going to go straight to the tech and we're going to try that. 
unleash the power of sustainable janitorial processes, cleaning up your business one chuckle at a time. <laughs> Clean and green, save the planet one mop at a time, adding value to your business, sustainable toilet paper. It's not bad. Laughs and moves, a perfect match. Janitorial Avengers, going beyond cleaning, sustainable janitorial processes, blah, blah, blah. So basically, I've just written an entire blog post, exactly what you said. Now, I go in and edit. Sometimes I can get 50% there. Sometimes I can get 95% there. But I'll tell you, again, are we not recording? I, uh, I've written probably 10 or 12 of the Ventana blog posts while I was stopped at stoplights. I go, oh, I got a great idea. Pop out my phone. Whoop. Create it back when I get to my desktop. I put it into the format I want, and then I'll edit it. I might add some images. I might add some additional content. I might add a little embedded video or something. But basically, we just created a blog post with just that simple prompt. So now let's do this. Let's make this. I'm just going to say shorten it and make it a marketing email to existing customers who already know our services. And it knows to create the subject line. Well, that's new. It's adding a little uh, emoji. I think that's kind of too long. So I'd probably go in and I'd say, give me, and this is what I find doesn't work that well. Uh, 150 word summary with a clear call to action. <laughs> yeah, still too long. I find this happens a lot when you tell us to do length after you've already done something else. But it's it's shorter for sure. So there you go. There's an email. Let's do one more. Somebody give me a language. Korean. Wow. So I don't speak Korean, but if anybody else here does, I've done. I speak Spanish, and I've done it in Spanish, and it's usually perfect. Pretty amazing, right? So you, you can imagine in, in the real world what this is going to do is it'll just we have there's technology now that can use Google Translate or Bing Translate that'll translate websites. It's usually not that great. This is going to just blow that away. You'll be able to just have the website automatically translated when you go, and it'll be perfect. Yeah. Okay. So what is my motivation to read a blog that has been produced by a robot versus listening to your authentic voice about a topic? Um, you won't know the difference. I mean, I go in and I edit my blog post so that it's more in my voice, but start thinking about the fact that it will be able to learn your voice and it'll start to be able to write things in your voice. Some of the work that we're doing at Microsoft is to integrate it into your proprietary content. So you'll be able to say, you know, hey, based on our standards within my company and the kind of voice that we've used traditionally that you see on this website or in our marketing emails, write a post about this to make it sound like our business using the style guidelines that you've learned about from our internal content. So you won't know the difference. And in fact, I can show you all of our recent blog posts. You won't know, you wouldn't be able to tell any other. Now that'll bring up. Trademark issues as a, a, a patent issue. Like right now, it's not. A, I, I had to invent a product. I asked it to invent a product. I said, hey, create some unique product that's never been invented for surfers. And it came up with an invented GPS tracker for a wetsuit that would allow you to be found if you drifted out to sea. Kind of cool. The machine isn't allowed it on a patent. So who owns that? It, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that's going to pop in. If anybody's a lawyer or encouraging someone to study law, like this is a whole new frontier. This is going to keep you employed forever. This is a tsunami of trademark. Yeah, it's a tsunami of opportunity. Yep. Totally obviated. Yep. People don't understand the danger here from just, yep. just jump bot machine. And think about all the 
great things, and yep, we can talk about at the end all the craziness that's going to come with this. Yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, let's say that you created this because you thought you had an identity or a whole. Okay. Every shack has its own different identity, and which can you play with different, or you can yeah. learn from on a pro? Yeah, um, some of the new tech which is learning in real time. This model, this large, large language model that I'm demoing, is actually stopped at September 2021, so it doesn't have a lot of relevant new information. The Bing integration actually will reference uh, updated information in the real time internet. Um, but yeah, you can tell it to create a voice, make it in the in the voice of um, some author or something like that, and you can start to um, you can, it'll learn, but you can also change. Right now, we can do it um, without learning because it's already learned so much of what's out in the open. Yeah. Like do Dr. One... Dr. Seuss or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me do one thing real quick. Write a short story about um, Santa Cruz works and make him ride. Oh, no. <clears throat> Could you perform that for us? It's kind of cool. With every networking event and workshop they host, Santa Cruz Works nurtures the most talent and ideas they gave that paved the way for a brighter future for one day. That's How freaking amazing is that? Right now, it said Santa Cruz Works is a place. It's not a place, so I'd go back and edit that. But it's basically just scaffolding for productivity that allows me to go faster and do more and sometimes catch information that I never would have even thought of about my own business for any Question. Um, so OpenAI mm -hmm. uh, has a paid model at $20 a month, yep. and it sounds like OpenAI is this integrated now with yep. Bing and it has a search engine. What would be the reason? So it sounds like Bing plus OpenAI has added integration yeah. for free. What would be the reason? Yeah, so it's a really interesting question. The new Bing is supposed to have GPT-4, which is the latest large language model integrated into it. I'm finding it's not perfect. So I, the, the other thing is, is that the Bing um, solution doesn't allow you to integrate other applications. The new GPT-4 through OpenAI does. So you'll be able to do things like not just write a post, but also automatically publish it, integrate it to Shopify and automatically publish it to Shopify. So it'll allow you to do workflow that integrates different applications. And there's more and more of those, just thousands that you've already created, but that's part of what it's gonna do. Okay. Five minutes. Yep, all right, so let's do graphics. <laughs> Uh, this we'll do it in Dolly, which is another tech from OpenAI. The big ones are ChatGPT and Dolly. Um, I also use a tech called Midjourney, which is listed in the deck, which has got amazing image, images that it can create. Um, but let's just do it. So this is what you do. I'm going to do it through, let's try it through the new designer tool that Microsoft launched last week. That is a complete uh, Canva. So if you use Canva, this is basically uh, evolving into a free version of Canva. It's also available here in the, the, the right side of uh, the new thing that we're doing. Let's do this here. So, um, create a graphic of a, a gold, bald dude looking out over the ocean at Mitchell's Island, Mitchell's Cove, in the Santa Cruz. With a surfboard, make it photorealistic. So this, I did this earlier and it worked great. This one less so. But still, I mean that's a that's a pretty cool. So designer allows you to do things like it'll it'll overlay the content and you can then edit it. This dude's got way more hair than my dad. No. <laughs> Let's do a quick one here on Dolly just directly to try. Somebody give a shout out. Some text, some graphic you might want to create for content for your business. <clears throat> can we do the sustainable toilet paper? <laughs> Uh, an image of a woman on the beach with a sustainable 
no idea what this is going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Prohibit it. Okay. It's I don't know the resolution on these. I'd have to research that. I know Mid Journey allows for 4K, um, and you can tell it to do 4K. You can just define what, define what the aspect ratio is. I, I just don't have the background of what we're doing. I'm guessing you can get really high quality. Wouldn't be surprised if we start charging for stuff like that. So again, Mid Journey is um, another tech that I'm finding right now has got the best um, AI creation for graphics. As I said, the surfboard company we positioned it for interior designer. It's, although they're all surfable, they're great art pieces. So I've been trying to create interesting things that have, you know, architecture. I've created full rooms where I can then use Photoshop to place our surfboards in as a way to kind of position us as doing innovative things with technology and in the interior design space. This I just said, create a wooden surfboard shop. And it came up with this idea of a wooden whale. So I threw one of our boards in with Photoshop. You can tell that it does shadowing isn't right because I stuck at Photoshop. But kind of cool, that's a full image that it just thought would be really interesting. And every time you give it a prompt, it'll come up with something new. You do the same prompt, you'll have some whole other set of graphics or text or whatever that comes up. My son is a musician. He has a pop punk band in LA, and I've been creating all of his Spotify music covers using Vidner. And so that's what is, uh, he's got a song called Emotional Disaster. I said, girls who are emotional disasters at a, at a rundown shopping mall. That's what he came up with. I see Photoshop put some stuff up there about him, and that's the song that's on Spotify. Quick plug, my son and Doug's son are playing a catalyst together, uh, two bands on July 29th. Here's where the tickets are. <laughs> Doug doesn't know this yet, but he's agreed to buy beer for anybody that decides to come. And also, it's a member of Santa Cruz Works. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> uh, and, and here's the link to that. Again, that's the QR code for tickets. But it wasn't just a shameless plug. Who's that? <laughs> so, what we do, anyway, I, I'm not going to scroll. So, Mike son, Neil, or Doug son, this is an AI generated uh, article and press release. And I use newswriter.ai, which Mark's going to talk about, to create part of this. And it came out really, really well. I edited it a little bit. Doug did some editing, I think. Matt Swinerton took it, created an article for Event Santa Cruz about the concert. And we basically created some of the marketing promotion and the overview of what we're doing or what our kids are doing using AI. So cool example of, again, yes, AI is taking over and there's trademark questions and all this, but hey, we're using it to go a lot faster in promoting our son's good, son's and girl. So anyway, good example of how even, and we were talking to somebody up there, yeah, who was talking about lyrics, you know, you can generate song lyrics and tweak them and edit them and do all kinds of things. But anyway, that's that. Um, this is me. Uh, Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Again, that's the chat. That's the, that should be an I at the end. That's Sam, who's uh, events on the dot search, CEO works uh, AI. If you connect with me, I don't, if I don't know somebody, I usually don't allow them to connect with me, but if you do it in the next day or so, I'll remember it's from this group and I'll accept what it's in. Um, my Microsoft, my Ventana, they all go to the same place. I was in the room when we launched Outlook.com, so I grabbed the get Outlook.com. <laughs> Uh, this is the mid journey, but it's a little bit better than the. Oh, it was you just getting off. older and each photograph. Right? Yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't yeah. notice that. <laughs> so, the next one was a photorealistic portrait of a bald man overlooking Richard's phone in Santa Cruz, California, inside a Redwood Tree House at sunrise, 4K, average ratio of 16.9. This is a uh, mid journey, is a little more technical. You have to chat to use Discord, a couple of other things to do it. But it's pretty good. And that does look like Mitchell's phone. And there's that kind of kind of like the yeah, that's interesting. So kind of fun. And then at the very end of the deck, if you download it, I've got one more thing. This is just um, a set of example prompts for different types of things you might want to do in a business. Simplify. 
So that's at the appendix of the back if you want to use that as a resource. Thank you.